Welcome back everyone to my math channel online today. In this video, I would like to talk about the factor theorem uh, of the course of pre-calculus math 12. Before I get into the lesson, let me remind you about my course website. Um, you can register to my course website um, mathcourses-online.teachable.com or you can visit my mathteaching.ca. I post a weekly lesson uh, over there as randomly. And um, beside that, I will post some, you know, something in interesting about the code of the week or uh, any story I've or poem I like uh, to post about. So you can visit my mathteaching.ca and see what's going on over there as well. So now let me get into the lesson. In the past, we have learned the remainder theorem in this unit. Now I'm talking about the factor theorem. So what is a factor theorem? What is the difference between the remainder theorem and the factor theorem? Let's recall this question. What is the remainder when x squared plus x minus six divided by x minus two? So if you forget about the remainder theorem, let me remind you. In the remainder theorem, we said that if the polynomial, um, if the polynomial divided by x minus a, then p of a will be equal to the remainder. And therefore, this statement help us to find the remainder without the long division. Now, imagine you have a long expression, algebra expression, right? Now, this one is, of course, a symbol. We can factor out and we can divide, no problem. But for some long algebra expression, this will reduce a lot of tasks if the question only asks you to find out about the remainder. Um, and not require you to find the quotient, right? The answer, it should ask for the remainder. So that's the way we do it. So let you this theorem now answer this question. So let's put in P of, now our factor is x equal to, right? If x minus two, then x equal two. So we want to put in x equal two in here and we figured out this one. So follow the expression, we will have two square plus two minus six. And this equal four plus two minus six. And of course it's equal zero, right? Six minus six is zero. So our answer for this question will be, Zero is the remainder. That is our answer for this question. If we, we calculate and we get the answer is one, then the answer will be remainder equal one. If we calculate the answer is minus three, then of course the remainder will be equal minus three. But in this case, we have the remainder equal zero. So this phenomenon, Lead to, lead to a factor theorem, a factor theorem. So what is a factor theorem? Now, to understand this, let me use this to factor out, right? So if I have to factor this expression, and everybody know how to factor the algebra quadratic, right? A function in math 10, you learned this already. So we split this become three times two. 
and we assign the correct sign. If this is plus and if this is minus, then we have plus three minus two equal plus one. And therefore, we will have two brackets multiplied together. The first bracket will have an accent here, and the second bracket also have an accent here, so that when we multiply, we get back to x squared. And plus three will go in here, and minus two will go in here. And of course, when you tie them together, this equivalent to this expression, right? And that's why how we factor it. Also, if we set this function equal to zero, right? And you solve for x, then this is the one of the factor, right? One of the factor. And this also another factor, right? So we have two factors going on here. Now, if you set each factor equal to zero and you solve, then of course the answer will be x equal minus three and x equal plus two, right? That's our answer for this quadratic equation. So let's test it, okay? So let's let test this. If we put in P, and we're gonna use the first value here, right? X equal minus three. We're gonna put minus three in here and I calculate it out, right? So that will be follow this expression, just follow it, right? I'm gonna really copy it again. So that will be a three square plus with um, minus three, right? And plus minus three, check minus three, minus six. So this will be nine minus three minus six. Yes, it's zero. So yes, we got P minus three equals zero, right? And according to our remainder theorem, this is a remainder. It should coincident that our remainder equals zero. Now let's test the other one. P, if x equal two, P of two will be equal. And actually I think for, for two, we did it here already. So yes, so we don't have to do it here anymore. So obviously you can see that if one of these bracket is a factor, then P of minus three, right? If X equal minus three, we put it in here, we get the remainder equal zero. And if X equal two, we put it back in here and we figured out our remainder also equal zero. So what does tell us what? It tell us about the factor theorem. The factor theorem say that if, so this is the remainder theorem, right? So now let's say factor theorem. So our factor theorem say, follow on of this understanding, we know the fact that if P of X divided by X, um, now I can use a different letter so that we distinguish between the, um, Remainder theorem and the factor theorem, but actually it's the same, right? I can use B or A or Y, whatever I want to use, right? But let's say if I put a B here, if the factor theorem say if P of X divided by X minus B, and um, X minus B is a factor, right, is one of the factor, then, then what happened? Then P of B, right, will be equal zero. And you can see here, zero here, zero here, right? P of B will be zero. So the fact that if we plug in the number and we calculate the remainder and the remainder becomes zero, then we have a factor theorem instead of the remainder theorem, 
right? It will lead to the fact that you run. So in other words, if the x minus b here or x minus a here is one of the factor of this expression, then if you substitute the value of x equal a in here or x equal b in here into the polynomial, the answer will be equal to zero. So in other words, what does that mean? If this is different from zero, then the remainder tell us that um, this number not a factor of the algebra expression. But if, the, if we plug it in and the remainder turn out to be zero, it means this div divisor here is a factor of this polynomial. So that is the only different thing between the remainder theorem and the factor theorem. Now, because of based on of this um, knowledge, we be able to decide whether or not if this divisor is a factor of the expression here. So that will lead you to answer the question two I post on the board here. So let me erase all of this. So now we understand the factor theorem already. We understand the um, remainder theorem. So I'm going to, I'm going to write down the factor theorem underneath here so that we remember it, right? So now this is the remainder theorem, right? This is the remainder theorem. Now I'm going to go to factor theorem. So factor theorem say if P of X divided by X minus B and X minus B is a factor of P of X, then P of B will be equal the remainder and that remainder equal zero. So basically this is the factor theorem. So I'm going to help you to answer the number two I posted here, right? All of this is the fact about the factor theorem. So let's find out how we're going to answer this question too here. The question asks, does 3x to the power 4 plus x to the power 3 minus 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 has a factor of 3x plus 1? And how do we do that? And what we do is using this factor theorem figured out. So assume, right? Assume. 3x plus 1 equals 0. Let's say it, if it is a factor, right? You solve for it, what the value of x? x will be equal minus 1 third, right? Because you move number 1 over minus and divide both sides by 3, you get x equal this value. So now let's test, right? Let's test. So the, by the remainder theorem, Sorry, by the factor theorem, right? By factor theorem, by factor theorem, it say that P of minus one third will be equal to what? Let's check. We have three times minus one third to the power four, follow the expression, adding with minus one third to the power of three, minus minus one third, square, right, because this is x square, plus two times with minus one third and plus one. Actually, I ran out of the room. I don't like it, so my handwriting is too big. So let me rewrite again, sorry about that. So we have p minus one third will be equal to what? Three times minus one third to the power four, right, substitute this by minus one third, Follow the expression, 
adding with minus one third to power of three, minus three times with minus one third to power square, adding with two times minus one third and add one. So let's figure it out. P minus one third will be equal. Um, this will give me three. Now, because this is even power, so this negative chain become positive and three to power four is 81. Minus, this is negative and power is odd, so it will become negative. No chain, one over 27. Three to power three is 27, right? Yes. Minus three times with, now this is negative, but we square is odd power, so become a positive one over nine. Um, now positive times negative is negative two over three and one. So let's figure out what it equal. I'm gonna cancel the three with the 81 here. So I got one over 27 positive minus one over 27, this to cancel this with three, nine down here, so become minus three over three, right? Um, this cancel with that. Minus three, no, sorry. This cancel with that, so minus one over three, sorry. Minus two over three plus one. So this cancel with that, becomes zero. This and this adding to it, give us the negative one plus one equals zero. So yes, the answer is yes. Because after we check, we know that P of minus one third Plug into the expression, we got equal zero. The remainder equals zero. That means, yes, 3x plus 1 is one of the factor. One of the factor of this algebra expression. Now, you know that when you solve for any quadratic equation, you try to factor it out and you sum by factor, you set them equal zero and you sum it. And that's how you get the root of the quadratic equation, right? The same like we did it here, except that um, this is a one more level, which is we have higher power. It could be x to power seven, it could be x to power five, it could be x to power six. And by learning the long division, we'll be able to factor it, or synthetic division, we'll be able to factor it as well. And therefore, our purpose when we have any algebra expression like this, we try to factor it out to solve for the root of the equation, right? And this is one of the main thought to find out. Now, now we answer this question already, but I want to go one more step right we test it we know this is factor so let let's find out the rest of the factor of our algebra so let's find out what it is using the synthetic we should learn in the previous lesson so i'm going to say now we we'll really use the synthetic right let's review for you as well synthetic the reason let's use that so for synthetic, we just copy the coefficient, right? So I'm going to say three. And let's check the descending order. This is four and three and two and one. So that's okay. So we'll put in here three, one, minus three, plus two, and plus one. All of this, we divide it by the factor x equal minus one third. So, and bring this down, we have three. Three times minus one third is minus one, right? Three times minus one third is minus one. Minus one at one is zero. 
So now zero times minus one third is zero. Add them at minus three. Minus three times minus three times minus one third will be at one, right? Minus three times minus one third will be at one. So at one is three. Three times minus one third again will be minus one. At them, we got zero. That's true, right? Zero. So this will give us the quotient answer of this factor will be x4 divided by x to the power one go down to a one level. So it become three x to the power three plus zero x square, which is I don't need to write out, right? This is x square, this is x. So will be minus three x and plus three. So basically, if we answer and we find out this equation, then our answer for on the factor, this polynomial will be equal. The first factor is this one, see one of them, right? 3x plus one. Time with our second bracket will be this. Now you only can, now, if you continue to factor this, you cannot because um, this, this doesn't give us any, any number. You can put it in here to make it zero, right? Um, so the only factor you can factor here is three. You put now the factor three times x to the power three minus x and plus one. So you can write this as this polynomial function as number three in front, time with this, time with this, x to the power three minus x plus one. So that is our answer, right? And therefore you can, you can find the root of this function, one root of it. Now this one, you cannot find the root because you cannot factor it further. But, but basically, that is how we factor out the algebraic pressure using the synthetic division and how you do it, right? Um, usually, if, if the question asks you about uh, finding the root polynomial, they will design the question in the way that you will be able to factor um, continuously, like keep factoring down until you get the on the rules of the polynomial function. So this is the lesson about the factor theorem in our course, Precalculus Math 12. Um, I have some more written ensemble solution and some notes, right, lecture notes as well, put into my math course online.digibon.com. So it benefits you a lot if you not just watching the, my YouTube video, but also get into the course, um, get on the sample solution, do the readings and uh, practice. And in that way, you will be able to learn math in the way that um, in the way that you learn the full course. You it give you a chance to practice and it help you if you have to do homework in the school. If you do my homework, it's the same like you do homework in the school because mathematics only have one universal language. Once you absorb the concept already, you'll be able to do on the homeworks. They're slightly different, but you will be able to do that for sure. So it's just the reminder you about if you liked the way I'm teaching and explaining the concept by concept. Now keep in mind, if you watch the bunch of videos together, connected well together, then you understand better than you just jump on the YouTube here and see once in a while one of my video 
and watching another one, then you might not get the whole idea. But if you continually watching and follow, then you know it's easier to understand about math. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy my video and thank you for watching. Um, our next lesson probably will be about sketching the factor, a uh, factor it using the synthetic factor regression and sketch the polynomial function. So everything you learn in this, this course, Math 12, will help you to sketch the function by hand rather than using the roughing calculator. Um, what is the advantage of it? I don't know. <laughs> it's like my student would say, if we have a calculator already, so why don't we just punch in the number and get the answer rather than using remember multiplication table and thing, right? Um, I think the answer is more complicated than that. If you remember the multiplication table, you have a number sent in your mind. And then when you do it, it's a lot quicker and you understand better when I show you how to factor the expression. Um, because that's my experience. Students who always using the calculator take a lot longer to understand about the factor theorem or about the factor when they go up to the math 10 level. So my advice to you, go back and learn the multiplication table. <laughs> Maybe you don't like it, but that's how I experience anyway. Thank you for watching and bye for now.